Hello and nope. <laughs> Did that work? I hope it worked. Hopefully. I say hello and welcome. My name is Winona and welcome to this twelve FPS Kitty Care. And today I am with the lovely Mighty Quinn, or just Quinn, or sometimes Rosie, if there happens to be a character named Quinn also in, in the room, but nope. Not for this one today, though, thankfully, so just Quinn is fine. Yes, and oh, is a, and today I will be playing Mad Lad, and is a, is a who you will be playing? I'm playing as Kaylin, who was with Mad Lad for something that uh, went very, very wrong, and she kind of wants to make sure he's okay. He's still not okay, but that's besides the point. <laughs> yes, we we have we've stumbled into the trauma. They, they stumbled into the trauma zone, and now it's like no one's really okay, but we're at least trying to figure out how to move forward. Yeah. It may well. Yeah, which. He tried to get information from Rogue for which it kind of happened, but he came into say he came into this questioning without much questions and didn't realize what he was getting himself into. He was like, ah, I see. He's more. He was just more. He more wanted the truth than anything. But again, that that's besides the point. Uh, today is a what's Caitlin doing? Well. She is probably running around, or rather, not exactly running around, but wandering through EGAD trying to figure out where to find a small pirate child <laughs> in this giant place. <laughs> do you say, do you want to make a, a investigation roll? Yes. I think that would probably be a good idea. Where are your numbers again? You have numbers. Yes, this you... is a numbers game. Yeah, there we go. I don't quite play her quite often enough to have her numbers number two. Look, no matter how long you play a character, you they say you never truly have their n numbers memorized. I can remember them for some of my others at least. <laughs> Fair. Oh, right. Wrong, wrong one. I put that in the wrong zone. Whoopsie. It's okay. Either way, it's still a two. She, her, her investigation was a two. She doesn't have a clue. Yeah, you have no idea where this kid would be. There are so many interesting places in this one treehouse. He could literally be anywhere in your mind. Yes, plus she also doesn't really know Mad Lad that well. The only reason she picked up on the pirate thing is because he hasn't really been shy about admitting that one. Yeah, it's a part of his character. Plus, you know, the boat. The boat, indeed. Uh, do you want to roll a d4 then? Oh, just going, just picking a random direction. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Which way are you going? One. Hmm. One. You decide, you know... All pirates have to get hungry eventually, so you just go towards the kitchen. Yeah, that's like the easiest thought, just also for people in general. Go to the kitchen. Yeah, everyone needs to eat. In quotation marks. Not everyone does, but we're forgetting that point for the matter. Let's see... Most people should be eat doing some form of refueling. Yes. And... yeah. As you literally, like, it investigate everywhere else in this treehouse. You looked in the training grounds. You looked in the, let's say, you looked out in the front. You decided to, look, let's say, you decided to try to go, some, like, near this, let's say, near the jungle. See if he was there. Try to do exploring. You even looked in the, you even, like, tried to go near the rooms where a lot of people are seeing, let's say, 
see if you he has a sign, and you you see you say you see Madlat's room, but he wasn't in there. It was the door was slightly propped open, but he wasn't in there. So you just decide to take a break from investigating. Maybe you you think he's not even here today, but nope, Madlat's right there in the kitchen. <laughs> Eat is a having is a having some chips and soda. <laughs> In that case, Mad Lad, you see a cat come walking in, and she's looking a little bit frazzled as well as staring around like try she's trying to find something. In fact, she probably looks right past you at least once. Oh, uh, hey, Caitlin, what you looking for? Just for funsies, I'm going to roll a whiz save to see if she he startles her. <laughs> What is your wisdom? Your wisdom is... <laughs> Straight T20. Oh, now you do good. <laughs> 17 for that one. The tail fluffs a bit, but other than that, she doesn't, like, do the tunish jump. She just kind of goes, Oh, oh! Mad lad, there... Well, I... I was actually trying to find you. Oh? And Mad Lad sits down his his drink. Well, I just... I just want to check in. Ah, uh, I see. Um, I'm doing... Okay? And he's gonna roll a deception for that. <laughs> Do I need to be rolling a, a contesting insight? Oh, yeah. Okay. You were a bit better at reading people, <laughs> weren't you? Yeah, you were. Yeah, that's only a six. Twelve. Yeah, this kid ain't fine. And say he is trying to put on a brave face, but there's, there is, th say this kid is not doing good. He is very much in almost every sense of the word broken. Oh, and Madlad can probably see it on her face that she has just straight up just seen through him, but her face is really sympathetic. Like, she gets it. He, she gets he's not okay, and he's trying to be okay, but it's really not. It's really, really not. And because she's not even hiding it, you can tell that she... You you can tell that she not only can tell that, that she's really, really sympathetic about it. Like, she gets it. Yeah, Mad Lad doesn't really respond. He just more just doesn't make eye contact with her and just goes back with nibbling on his chips and taking a sip. Uh, I... I kind of figured. It's, um... I don't really know what to say. Just that I, um... I get it. And... You... Have you talked to anyone? Do, do you plan to talk to anyone about this? I... And Mad Lad sort of look around. Um, yeah, but let's go somewhere more private. Yes. Yes, that's probably a good idea. Um... I'm still very new and have no idea where anything is. Why don't you pick the place? Oh yeah, I, I can do that. As Mad Lad goes more upstairs to one of the more quieter, more private sort of room areas, very much away from the main hustle and bustle, similar to what he did with Roquefort in, in his name when he talked to him, and gets to a room that has, a, like, has at least a comfy couch. And is a closes the door behind them, and George just sort of sits on the goes to sit on the couch. 
and Caitlin just follows along behind, and when they get to the room, she neatly sits down next to him and goes, Um, I'm not really familiar with this kind of thing from this angle, but, um, do you plan to talk to anyone at all? I, I talked to Roke for at least about this and the situation, and it's not good. It's not really good at all. He, it took some persuasion, but he did basically almost, basically confirmed what we were told, though he is still, like, Omaran did mention very suspicious about killing him again to, like, do the nat go through the natural su sugar plum rebirth cycle, but that's, like, that's sort of expected in a way. That is concerning, but also not quite what I meant. Mm. I meant, have you talked with anyone about this happening at all? He doesn't, well, he doesn't want us to. He wants to keep this more of a secret because if people start to know about sort of what happened, it could put other people in danger. I'm surprised that he hasn't come to you about it, to talk to you about it. Oh, I'm really bad at this. And Caitlin kind of puts a paw on her face, like, and would you like to roll an insight for a moment? Of course! I would love to! Let's see if Mad Lad puts down the pieces. Puts together the pieces. What number is that? Ah, I see. That's an 8 plus 3. What's math? What is math? I was right. It was Love 11. It. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you just because it's not that obvious, but it suddenly strikes you, Mad Lad. She's not actually talking about Rogue Fort situation when she says, have you talked to anyone about this? She's not specifically referring to Rogue Fort. Uh, but because it's 11, um, you probably don't pick up on the fact that she's referring to you seeing your dad die. Yeah, Mad Lad sort of like, yeah, he... He doesn't fully give, it's just like, I tried to, con I couldn't convince him all the way, which really made me sort of sad, though. It's a, he, it's a different sort of situation with him, even though I want to help him, he doesn't entirely want my help, he does because of other kids being hurt before in a sense like I'm guessing something really bad he didn't want to talk about it like it's the sort of bad that you don't want to talk about it but unfortunately I couldn't come up with a lot of good questions because it's just like I never done this sort of situation before I I say I'm usually just there's a problem I, I say I solve it I say usually there's a clear solution but they're really... Oh, I get that. I mean, I'm... Usually my solution to problems is either smashing them or using them as scratching posts. So it's very hard to fix something where neither of those is an option. Yeah, and I thought, like, at least the rebirthing thing could be at least a better option, a solution that we could at least do. To at least help him somewhat, but again, I couldn't really convince him to do it. Well, well, you said you saw him as a father, and I think he's trying to do that thing that parents do, where they keep their kids safe. Yeah. And it's not easy. But... Uh, no, no, uh, you, I, can, you can do you. But... Well, maybe I'm being too delicate. 
what I meant. Uh, oh, I'll just be blunt. I meant, are you okay after seeing what happened during that hunt? Mad Emotionally. Life. Like, emotionally, are you okay? Are you talking to someone about it? Mm. No. Not really. It's hard to do something like that without sp spilling this whole situation. But I guess there's a way, but it. I haven't really well, talked about it. May I give this small suggestion? Yeah. Find someone who can swear an oath of secrecy about it. Because at least then you can talk. And you don't have to mention the entirety of the situation. You can just mention that your dad's in a hard spot and you can't help. And it's frustrating. And or that he you saw just, him. Or he you just... saw something awful happen to him. Or just say that the mission somewhat failed, and I is say he died, even though coming he came back is say he is say everything is not all right. Exactly. It's not good to to just try and act like those things haven't happened. The worst thing is. And Mad Lad's going to make a wisdom saving throw with disadvantage. Okay, yeah. Dice, I love you right now. You are giving me everything I need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a nine. I say he, he starts bawling. Um, Caitlin probably is going to jump at that. Because, oh... Oh, we went. We jumped straight to tears. Did not expect them that fast. And um, she's going to kind of pause for a sec, like hesitate and go, before kind of opening up and just very lightly tugging Mad Lad into a hug. Oh yeah, Mad Lad no, uh, like, makes no very loose. Yeah, Mad Lad it's, makes it's no very re loose. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. You go. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> Yeah. It's a very loose hug that's basically like if he so decides that he wants to pull out, he can pull out. She will not stop him. But Yeah. Madla takes that hug very willingly. He starts clinging on to you. You are hugging a very, very, very fluffy cat. And he needs fluffy and soft right now as he just falls and so he just falls into your chest. I know, I know. Oh losing Losing someone hurts so much. And if this isn't even the first time. I... I get that. Oh, do I get that. And she squeezes a little bit and... Um... I'm gonna ask you to roll inside again. I know he's very emotional, but it's yeah. obscenely low. Yeah, yeah. All right, that will be four plus fourteen plus three is seventeen. You realize she's lost someone too, and you kind of get the feeling that, unlike you, or at least for this case, she didn't get them back. Yeah, and what's your passive insight? Ah, uh, let's see. <laughs> Passives. What the duck do those? Where the duck are those? It's uh, usually on the side of the character sheet. Let's see, passive perception is ten. Passive insight is usually ten plus the insight mod, so that should be thirteen. Yeah, with thirteen for sure. Is a Matt is a yeah. You could definitely Matt definitely look to her, and you sort of see the face and. You also see that, yeah, Mad Lad couldn't get whoever or whoever it was back either. So it's just like, they almost like silently handshake. <laughs> yes, pain, handshake of sad. 
but she says very quietly, it hurts so much. Even when you think you've gotten better. And if I sh I thought I got- you're right, I thought I'd gotten better, I thought everything was okay, in a way. I- it just hurts more that it feels like he- I know Rogue Four wants to protect me, but he also seems to see that I've seen this sort of thing before. I've- greater power want to say just hunting you is just like- it's just, and he just sort of balls, he continues to cry. Yeah, he gets a soft squeeze, and the tail joins in now, and he's just surrounded by fluff, and she says quietly, I know, I know. This is why I think we should, you, we should find someone for you to talk to about this. I know we can't share we can't share what your dad's going through but we can at least find a way to make this hurt less maybe it just sort of hurts just because like I know that he got back but that's not the point I still saw him die and this is the second time and I'm not very sure if he fully realizes that I'm I see that that's just messing me up. I, I never know. wanted to go through that ever again. I know, I know, I know, I know, sweetheart, I know. Yeah, and Mad Lad's probably even oh, grabbing onto the pal. tail, similar to a blanket, and just helping him just curl around him more. Yeah. She's just, I know, I know. It hurts so much. I think and I know, I've. It's not quite the same for me, but I'll. It hurts. I never want to let. To, to see someone I care about get hurt like that again. And it hurts when there's nothing you can do. It felt even worse because when my family died, like, I sort of knew that I couldn't have done anything to help them to stop what was going to happen. But it feels so much worse because I felt like I tried to do everything that I could. Like, I tr did things. I did my best to get him out of the way to heal him. And I felt like my best was n was not enough. I felt so much weaker. I know. I know. I know. It's so hard. And we do our best, and sometimes it just isn't what's needed. I still felt bad because it felt like I should have. I've never... Nothing ever mm -hmm. since I got it. Are you a cleric? No. And sometimes you have to remember that you can't. And it's not your fault, even if you do your best. It's... Sometimes you just need stuff that you don't have, and you don't have it. Now that just, like, grab, like, just tightens his grip on her tail. I know. And there's so much that we all wish we could do to make things better. He gives like a little sniff. Who... Who did you lose? A best friend who was like my brother. Mad Lad gives a little nod at that. It was a couple years ago now, but I wasn't even there, and that's probably the thing that hurts the most. 
Mad Lad just continues get, giving a silent nod. Mm, but I'm... I'm not sure you'd want to hear what my story behind that is. It's alright. I... I mean... Please say... I... I... <laughs> like you... Like I've said, I... Say I've been through the same thing. Maybe this will somewhat bring sort of comfort in a way. Uh, maybe. It was about three, three and a half years ago now. Maybe a bit more. Um, around the time of the Happy Express, funnily enough. That makes it really easy to remember. Um, I had a friend who was a real kind. And we lived in the same town, and he was one of the kids at a local orphanage. And I lived with my family in the merchant section. But we would play a lot when we were little. We grew up together, and then... He, I wouldn't call it bad luck, but he certainly had a bad streak when it came to work and jobs. He had a, <laughs> had a bit of an odd thing from when he was really little that would get adventures either really hyped up or not. And it caused more than a few problems. So he always lived in the poorer parts of town, despite being a really good person. Um, there was a working accident while he was out one day, and where he lived, stuff got destroyed, basically. And there are these cliffs in, in near our town that have a lot of caves in them, and you can find some pretty neat, rare stuff in there. And he decided that he was going to go there and see if he could find some stuff to sell to get his house repaired before winter came. He found something unexpected down there and got attacked by a monster that he was not prepared to fight. He was found a couple days later and he was gone. I'm sorry. I know. A lot of people say that, but it's one of those situations where there's just nothing we could have done. It stings a lot. And sometimes I wonder if I'd been with him, maybe something else could have happened, or if I'd asked him to stay with me for a bit instead, or another friend of ours and I had instead just pitched in together to help him cover it, and then maybe he'd be here. But he's not. And that gives a little nod. Yeah. I felt similar when my family sunk. Say, I say, my family died. Our ship sunk. I thought that if I was a bit stronger, if I knew how to fight on a ship like they did, I could help with the cannons or shoot stuff at the enemy I thought I could at least help but again it just hurts now more but because I felt like I haven't even grown since then oh honey you've grown a lot I mean you did some serious damage it it may not have been what it was needed then but you're not helpless. You just didn't know the right things to help yet. 
Yeah, Mad Lad doesn't comment as he just hugs Caitlyn again. And she hugs back. She's she's also a little bit patting herself. He's like, I hope this is working. I really hope this is working. Am I doing this right? I don't know. <laughs> Fair. But, yeah, you're still wrapped up in the fluffy cat hug. Yeah, Mad Lad probably makes a comment. He's like, you're really soft. It's like a muffled, like, noise just because he's, he's just like, you are very soft. He loves the soft fur. <laughs> she giggles a little and goes, thank you. Yeah, you wouldn't think that I came from a tropical town, but I'm built for to handle the cold, surprisingly, and uh, I'm very used to dealing with humidity. Mm -hmm. Mad lad nod. Yeah. Similar to my big sister. She was from up north, but you wouldn't have known it by the way she handled the ship. <laughs> ship, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, my whole town is actually a seaport. Mostly. Oh? Mm -hmm. We, um, we're a seaside town with really high cliffs, as well as um, some beaches if you're willing to hike down to them. Of course, we're not really a big, well-known town, just because it's Honestly, kind of small. And our biggest sell was more scholars and wizard folk than anything else because of the tree. Uh, yeah. I, I'm a pirate, so we just sailed across the sea. I say, my big sis, Nala, I say, she was the main, I say, she was the main person, one of the main people taking care of the ship. She knew how to build them really well. Well, wow. I was never very good on a ship. <laughs> I am... Um, I can do merchant stuff really well, but when it comes to actually, like, being on ships, uh, I never really had sea legs. <laughs> Mama said, say, Mama said it took her a while to, to get her full sea legs. <laughs> Before she met Mama, say she only built a ship. She never really was on the ship for long, which, yeah. which is sort of makes sense. Yeah, especially when you're a Goliath. Oh wow, big. Yeah, she was even a barbarian too. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yeah. I'm I'm good with a forest, but unfortunately, I'm not very good at navigating by sea. Give me stuff that, like, uh, give me forests and fields and mountains, and I can find my way just fine. Yeah. I have been learning more about the forest than the mountains ever since I was basically roomed here. But, I see, my navigation skills up until now were mainly sea-based. Yeah, I I imagine that'd be quite the difference. Yeah. Though, it's not that much different. You still fall... You say, we... You say, both navigation skills usually follow the stars. And I know the stars pretty well. Yeah. Astronomy is a useful tool. No matter where you are. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think you'd like that friend of mine, the one who's not here anymore. He was a very nice person. I think you'd probably get along with him. Yeah, I think he would. I think my big sister would like you too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Still, days where it feels like there's something I could do, even if it was just. It's easy to get lost in the could-haves and what-ifs. That's what Mama always said. Mama Tia. 
Yeah, he... she actually has a degree in in psychology. Funnily enough. <laughs> eh. Psychology is one of those voodoo things. Doesn't not. Work. Nah, I don't think it really works. Honey, psychology is figuring out how people think. If... Yeah, but that's what detectives do. Detectives stink. Um, I think you're thinking of it a little differently than how I do. Usually when I think of psychology, I think of therapy. And that's what Mama has the degree in. For helping people figure out their emotions and feeling better after bad things happen. She's the matron of an orphanage, too, so she uses a lot of what she knows to help the kids. Yeah, I was wondering if you uh, say more, what was more about her. She seemed pretty powerful if she could, base, she could revive Roquefort. I honestly don't know. I mean, Mama Tia's just always been there. She's kind, she's got a degree as a... I, I don't think it was specifically a psychologist degree. I think it was, um... Therapy? No. Therapist? It was, it was a degree in that, and she got that. And she definitely uses a lot of the tricks, because... Well, when you end up in an orphanage, it's not usually because of good things. Yeah. I mean, the trope is that you're there as a baby, but the truth behind it isn't as true. Mad lad nods. Yeah. That's... I know that for sure. Yeah. She... She takes the job very seriously. Always has. Yeah. We need more nice people like her in this world. Yeah. She's... I was never one of the kids that she raised, but... Being there felt like a second home. Always did. My lad nods. Yeah, I never knew... I knew of orphanages, and I played with the kids every once in a while. If, or, if we ever made port for long, longer times. But I never experienced one, including when I came here. I basically just... Traveled from place to place when I first came here until I found my other dad. <laughs> yeah, that would make sense, but despite a lot of the stories, not all of them are that bad. I know that Mama Tia's is really nice because it always feels like a second home and she's always ready to take care of anyone who comes by. Mad lad nods. I could see that. From the way she, like, talked and held herself and stuff. Yeah, I think she's the cleric, but I'm not sure. I've never actually stopped to think about it. I mean, there's a, there's a few, you don't have to be exactly a cleric to know high level heat reviving healing magics it's the most common no. but not always like my uncle who was a bard knew of high level healing magic yeah um i think paladins can also do them but the only reason i think cleric is because mama was always doing a lot of healing and her, her place was always safe, and I usually, it, it's usually the kind of safe I associate with something that's really protected. Yeah, you um, don't want to, you don't want to peck around with clerics. Yeah, don't want to peck around and find out. Yeah. But, yeah. 
Like, I heard one story that, like, one cleric took down, like, an adult black dragon, and that stuck with me. Oh, yeah. I mean, clerics can be terrifying if given the opportunity. Mm-hmm. And enough of a grudge. Oh, yeah. For sure. But Mama's always very warm. And... I think always the scariest thing for Mama wasn't getting her angry, it was getting her disappointed. I feel like that's any parent, though. I feel, it just feels awful when they're disappointed. I don't know why, but I was never as afraid of having, one, having my mom or my dad disappointed in me as I was in having Mama disappointed in me. It just stung so much more. I don't know why. Mad lad nods. Yeah. It she's definitely like one of those people you don't want to disappoint, you know? Yes, it's so much that. But I I'm realizing we've gotten a bit off track. I'm talking helps and sometimes figuring out the right words for why you feel the way you do are important, and... Just the thing, something I would suggest looking into. Finding someone that's safe enough to talk to about this. My dad gives a little nod. Yeah, maybe. It, it might sting to try and talk about it, but... Sometimes the only way to make something feel better is to clean it out, and that includes getting some of the bad stuff to clear out, and that's a bad analogy. It's like when you... no. That, that. You yeah. have to clear out the bad stuff, and sometimes it stings to do that. That, that. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that, that gives her a little pat. <laughs> yeah. Words. Words. Words are hard. Yeah. <laughs> now they're just kind of sitting still bundled up in the double hug. Yeah. Maybe I can at least talk to my other dad about it. To, to help. He's been in more of these sort of situations than I have. Certainly wouldn't be a bad thought. Yeah. He's technically been in a war, if I remember correctly. Oh, that's terrifying. But I'm glad he's okay? Yeah, he's doing okay. That's good. Yeah. And this might be a little late, but would Matlad like to roll a perception? Oh, yes. What is that number? E. Okay. Just for a fun little nugget thing that I put in the title card. All right. Let's see. That's low, but let's see with the modifier. Thirteen. <laughs> You abruptly realize that Caitlin's wearing a cloak that she wasn't wearing the last time you saw her. Eh? What are you wearing? That's different. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's, um, it's a cape of the hair. I, um, oh, this is going to sound silly, but I forgot I had it. <laughs> I bought it a while ago and I left it inside my luggage instead of taking it with me. It would have been useful. If I'd brought it with me on the hunt. But I didn't think of it. Mad lad gives a little chuckle. <laughs> it's advantage on hearing. It's like, eh. I couldn't use that. It didn't even occur to me. Mad lad smiles a little bit. Being a little bit cheered up. More, a little cheered up. It's alright. I sometimes forget stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very cozy cape though. I mean, on me it's a cloak, but for most people it's a cape. That's fair. 
I say I got something that would have been useful for that fight, but at least for future fights, I have it as Madeline's gonna make a is gonna make a hammer space. What's that number? Okay, that's a four. He pulls out a he pulls out from his pocket a necklace. It's a glittering golden star shaped pendant with a on a silver chain. This make say this allows me to use this and uh, learn this sort of magic as Mad Lad sort of grips onto the golden star, which I imagine is like the star from Undertale. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's the image I have in my head. And Caitlin is just kind of tilting her head where she sits because, like, oh, pretty. I don't. Ha I don't have a clue what it is. I say the the star glows a bit, and it casts dancing light as like crystal sort of mini stars, similar similar in shape. Now are like slowly floating around the room. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, I gave Although it... Although I'm not sure how useful that would have been. It... I mean, for us seeing it would have been very useful, but also it would have let the... Let the um, well, it would have made the, the opponents easier. I mean... Words. Once... I mean, we were going to have a bad time in combat in the first place. At least this yeah. would have been a silent. At least this would have been sort of a silent way to be able to see. I could also yeah, cast. Probably. I could also cast daylight once per day. <laughs> oh, the things that did not occur to us. <laughs> yeah, I hate my lad sort of curls up on itself more. It's like I never really. I this may come as a shocker, and he says this very sarcastically, but I'm not the most sneakiest kid around. Like, I can be if I want to, but when I get in a fight, I get in a fight. Yeah, you need to get a sword. I have a sword, but all I can do and is say all of the tricks that I could do can only be used with my gun. If I, the sword is really just a last resort. Oh yeah, that that'd be a problem. I mean, I can be. I get very dumb often when I go into a rage. I mean, did you see how many times I miss? <laughs> I. It's so frustrating, and I got like two good shots the whole fight. That's so, hey, so that's, frustrating. Hey, those two good shots were amazing. Just jumping up and just nailing them. That was epic. Yeah. yeah, I'm proud of that one. But it's very funny. Sometimes the things that you can do and then suddenly the world decides, nope, that's not going to be the solution to this puzzle. <laughs> Yeah. At least with this, I can help my teammates. So, I mean, none of us had really dark vision except for like a few of us. It's just like, it's hard to, you can't really, especially for like you two who, well, kind of with Sue, they had a rage attack apparently. But as a, you were a melee fighter and. You can't really punch something you can't see. Yeah, I could do decently well with my ears, but... Yeah. Very difficult. Mm -hmm. I have a mean shot with the javelin, though. Rather proud of that one. Yeah, javelins are cool. You say it was a good shot. <laughs> yeah. That monster shirt didn't like it, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at least we... At least things turned out okay. They're not great, 
but they're not the worst that could happen. Mad Lad, and no. we can work our way to things being better. Yeah. Mad Lad gives a little nod. I just hate this waiting because it's just you yeah. know feels like we could just doing something even small, but we can't. It's just. Oh, I know. I have a. I have a friend that if he was in this situation, he would be right along with you. Monty could never seem to sit still and wait unless, unless it was one of his stupid money-making schemes. <laughs> Monty's still around. Maybe you can meet him sometime. I heard he, I heard he started taking levels in Bard. <laughs> nice. It's just. Oh, it's terrifying when I remember how much of a con man that 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 tune was. Oh, <laughs> he he would get us in so much trouble. I swear, you couldn't keep safe if he was hiding under a rock. <laughs> Mala chuckles a bit. I mean, don't get me wrong; he's a very very good salesman. The problem is. 90% of his schemes were not legal. And not even, like, the fun. I mean, sometimes those are the best schemes. <laughs> oh, I'm... Uh, no, I won't bring that. He's... A snake oil salesman I could deal with. Some of the things that Monty would get up to... Oh, stars. I could just hit him over the head with this flat side of my axe. <laughs> and Mad Lad... Is in a better mood now, like, he's laughing a little bit, he's not as scrunched up in himself right now. And Kyrian could be just as bad. He's, he, he had the ability to hear what people could think, and, oh, did he sometimes abuse that in the worst ways. Um, he would just, tell he would a, eavesdrop. Tele, telepathy, right? Yep, that's the word. Yay. He would, <laughs> He wouldn't do it on purpose all the time, but oh, sometimes he would hear something and he would just take off. I mean, so often he was usually trying to help someone, but still, it's just, oh. It, it was can, like he, It feels like that could be I, a bit rude. Well, he didn't always do it on purpose. It's just, apparently, the way he put it, it was like, people think at the same volume that they talk. And it's really hard to tune people out. Hmm. Interesting. I haven't really heard oh, yeah. anything like that. Yeah. Well, it also meant that he would get really bad headaches when we were in really crowded places. Because he couldn't turn it off. Mm. Well, he could mostly tune it out, but still, it was like... When we were really little, he would just get the worst migraines when we were in crowded places because he just didn't know how to tune everyone else out. I see. I mean, he got a lot better before... Well, before. Mad Lad gives a little nod. I'm just realizing this is another chance for Mad Lad to roll something, and I think it would be intelligence to realize who Kiri was. Alright. Intelligence. Again, it's kind of low. <laughs> I mean, that's a six! And the modifier, <laughs> she says hesitantly, eight. No, oh, sorry, wow, I'm sorry, the total, total, sorry, I wrote that wrong. The total is six. The modifier, too, is a four plus six. Oh, dear. Boy, these guys sound interesting. Yeah, Mad Lad is not in the, not in the investigating mood right now. You kind of get the hint that Monty is the tune, and that's really about you get, all you get. Fair enough. But, yeah. Nice guy. Tended to get himself in trouble. Honestly, both of them were like that. 
I mean, Monty's better. He still drives me up the walls. I still want to sometimes hit him upside the head. But he's gotten a lot better from before. <sighs> he sounds cool. He, he can be when he's not letting his ego get the better of him. <laughs> but last I heard from him, he was, um, I think in Toontown trying to break into the the performing industry, or at least to his best attempts. Oh, that's cool. Maybe I'll maybe I can investigate a little bit. And say I and say even though I have a room here, my main sort of home is in Toontown. Oh, you can't miss him. He's a six foot tall rat. <laughs> Literally or figuratively? Literally. <laughs> I'll remember that then. Yeah, he's a nice. He can be nice enough, but he's a bit um. He he can talk a lot without actually saying anything. Good to know. And Mad Lad just smiles and more just like slap, not like cuddles, but more just like rests on Caitlin. Basking in the fluff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm considering getting my the fo my fox fur cleaned up and turned into a scarf to send his way. I mean, fancy people have fox fur scarves, don't they? <laughs> as far as I know, yeah. I think furs are still... I'm not very sure what in means in this case, but I feel like furs are still a thing that rich people like. Or like people like showing off stuff do. My furs didn't turn out well I I may ask Rogue for it to help with maybe with some leather stuff instead but after the after everything it's just it feels a little hollow yeah yeah but yeah like I said I know for mine I plan to find someone else to it cause like heaven help me I may be an I, I may work as a merchant, but I'm not very good at actually, like, leather works. I mean, I'm, I do a lot more transport and sales inside my guild. Yeah, uh, say, what, say, what's your guild called? Does it have a name? <laughs> it's, um, it's one of those borderline generic ones. The Nefli Merchants Guild. Very straight to the point. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I'll remember that uh, from when I need to buy stuff. Honestly, I've been thinking of at least considering getting myself a crossbow. Well, well I think they would probably saw that. A lot of Nuffly stuff is that, well, I mentioned that we have a lot of wizards and such, so a lot of the product that we have is stuff made from the tree in the caves and then selling them to places outside town. I see. More I mean, we've magical. got a really good alchemist who lives in the area. He's cool, scary, but <laughs> very good at his job. That's fair. Yeah, more probably magical ingredients than anything. Well, we also do a lot of book stuff. A lot of powders and potions, as long with um, books. There's a lady by the name of Karnith, who's not really part of the guild, but we're associated. She can actually repair spell books. Ooh, that's cool. At least good for wizards. Oh, yeah. Um, she's a bookmender. That's her entire trade. She mends books as well as sells the supplies for making and writing in them. Mad lad nods. That's cool. And then I mentioned the alchemist, Dr. Grimm. <laughs> no, uh, that's not a joke. That's actually his name. No, I I like that name. My uncle was named yep. Chad Boot. Well, he's Doctor Griswold Grimm, and he runs a shop. <laughs> One moment, I am being called. All right. Sir. No, you're fine. Yeah. 
I'm back. Hello. Was just, I was just being informed that dinner is ready and I can and I can come up when I want it. Nice. Damn it! I, that's but, what I forgot to do. I forgot to preheat the oven. Oh you know, no! <laughs> you know what's fine? I say I. I just made a. I say I just bought a broth, a good sized bratwurst, so I'll be fine. Yeah. But. Yeah. Popping back, it's Doctor Griswold Grimm. He's very good at what he does. Real kind man. Very tall. Absolutely terrifying. Takes his job very seriously. Which makes sense, because apparently his specialty is poisons and potions, so you don't really want to joke around with that stuff. Yeah, that's fair. My uncle is an, is an artillerist, so it's a different kind of scary. It's more the scary is like, you can actually create that sort of scary. I mean, I've had that thought about quite a few of the things in Dr. Grimm's shop. He makes sure to include the antidotes with them, but also they're terrifying. Yeah, same with Chad. It's, a, it's amazing what he could build. Yeah. If I remember right, the doctor has a... Oh, for for a lot of the more hazardous products, you have to have either a license or some kind of written permission from someone else to be able to buy it. Bad lad thinks for a moment, but then just like shakes his head yeah i'm i mean we're we were pirates nothing we did was legal so i shouldn't think I about mean, the, that too hard yeah i mean he was so i've i've heard that he would let something skate by if you could give a good enough reason for it but you don't mess with dr grim yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I think he's the kind of person who has guard snakes in his house. You don't you don't mess with that. No way. <laughs> Understandable. It say it feels like it say Chad always had some sort of security in his workshop. Well, Dr. Grimm doesn't have that much. He said if you're willing to take your life in your hands trying to rob him, good luck to you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of that stuff just touching it is deadly. Yeah, poisons are no joke. Right yeah, poisons are no joke. Yeah. But <laughs> Sounds like we both know some very colorful people out there. Yeah. I miss my uncle. But there's plenty of other crazy people here that I've met that I love. You... I'm sorry if I'm coming off track for a moment, but you mentioned something about detectives specifically? Yeah. No story behind it. More like the law in general. I hate detectives in particular yeah. because they're like really smart. I think it kind of depends on them. I'm more down for a freelancer because, well, truth be told, they let a lot more things slide than the ones who actually work for cop. Mm, I never really met a good detective. So I Not don't... Not even one? No. <laughs> I don't know that many detectives. I mean, the guard for our Well, technically I know one detective. But he was a stick in the mud, so... Yeah. I mean, we had at least one cool guard who would let a lot of things slide, but he... He was very focused on keeping people safe. It was less about the law and more about keeping everyone in town safe. And as such, he was the only one I ever respected. I love not fair. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame, too, because he was my, he was even smaller than me. He was my age, and he was a detective. So, really smart kid, but honestly, sort of dumb becoming a cop. I actually got him to do a crime with me, though. That was fun. <laughs> well, not all detectives are actually cops. Yeah, but they work with I mean, cops. Yeah, though. they work with a lot of cops, but usually... 
for most of the detectives that I have met admittedly in passing, their job is just to find the truth, not so much to find a culprit. Uh, but they're still very law adjacent. He sort of just sort of squints. He's just like, I, I will take your thoughts and your feelings into consideration. I will take the knowledge you have given me into consideration. But I still am reserved to what I have experienced as a pirate and as a criminal. <laughs> he is still very wary about it. Yeah, she nods and does. I mostly have that opinion since they're the only ones who haven't give... Oh, right. Um... Hmm. They're the only ones who don't give up when a case isn't solved quickly. Mm. Well, at least at that part, I do respect them on that in a way. Like, unless they are very dedicated to their craft, and you kind of have to respect that. Yeah. She is going to roll a deception really quick. Oh, that's a 10. <laughs> All right, let's see if Mad La <laughs> What'd you get? What'd you that's get? A, that, you no, I know he does not get it. It's a two on the die. Ah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to let you roll again just because you're paying attention. Fair. All I right. Just I'll, want I'll him to get this. Fair enough. Okay, that's a 17 on the die. That works. Okay. For a second, it all skates by you. But then it suddenly kind of hits that you, she just said, they're the only ones who haven't given up. She's... There's a case that she's been keeping an eye on, and the detectives are the only ones who haven't completely given up on it by the sounds of it, and it's something that she's invested in. Yeah, Madeline sort of looks at her and sort of this is like, I don't want to pry, but is there something that that you've been hearing in slash keep, say, listening into a particular case? And you get a little twitch at that, and she says, Ah, I guess I didn't... Well, it's not really a secret. Um, my friend Kirian was the one who passed away. And about three years, roughly six to seven months after he passed away, the Nephli graveyard was robbed. Hmm. You think foul and play? No Everyone does. Because his... Well, not specifically foul play, but... We know that the place was robbed of bodies. And our town wasn't the only one hit. A lot of the really small towns with very, very small guards and officers were robbed of remains and no one's found out who or what or why and my friends were among those taken and I want to get him back just so he can rest Mad Lad nods and he is not he is at least smart enough to not think what say what he's thinking <laughs> because he's thinking Zombie minions, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to roll insight to see if she figures that one out. Are you going to do good on this, Kate? Yeah. 18! Let's she see. She lands on it. Yeah, let me see if I can get good deception. No. Nope. I mean, is he trying to hide it? Yeah. Because he's like, he's thinking of it. Because that's the first thing on top of his head. But that's a 13. Yeah. That's a 14, she sorry. She picks it apart. She picks it apart and, apart and she looks at him and says, Yeah, that's... 
That's certainly been a theory floated, but no one's actually found proof of that one. Like, no, there hasn't been any evidence at all. No one knows where any of them are. Nothing's happened that has a recognizable face. It's honestly unsettling, the fact that nothing's happened. Yeah. I at least then hope in your case they can help you find out what happened. Yeah. I mean, an ideal of ideals. I would stumble across enough money to hire a really, really, really good detective to look into it. But so far I haven't had a lot of luck, and the local ones, there's only so much they can do. Bad lad nods. Yeah, and if I can, and if on my travels and stuff I hear something about it, I'll definitely say pass it along to you. Thank you. I'd, I'd appreciate that. But, yeah, it's depressing. But, there's really nowhere to go but forward. Yeah. And I hope you will get the closure. Yeah, I do too. And I hope that you can find a way to help. Find a way for all of this to get better. Because by the sounds of it, if there's anyone who's earned that, it's you. And she kind of boops his nose with her paw. <laughs> yeah. But I kind of... I'm tired about talking all about the sad stuff. Um, Do you want to get ice cream? Sure. You know there's... Is there a place nearby that does chocolate? I think we I have mean, chocolate like... in the fridge. Mmm. We'll have to see. It's If it's not good chocolate, I think there's... I think I saw a place in town that has really good stuff. Like, it's got moose tracks. Mmm. You, you make a good argument there. Moose tracks are good. You know, I like trying new places. Let's go there. Sure thing. Let's, let's go. Enough with the sads. Time to combat them with sugar and chocolate. Yeah! Sugar rush! <laughs> and I think that's probably and... a good place to end it off. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, off the cat and the child go to gorge on chocolate to chase away the very heavy talk that they just had. Yeah. Ice cream always makes us feel better. Yeah, ice cream. Ice cream. But thank you, everyone, for listening in on this 12 FPS. I hope you all have a good time zone, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.